How's it my orchids and famous friends? Dave here with another greenhouse update. I have quite a few blooms to show you in this update along with a number of other interesting developments. So grab a cup of coffee, sit back and enjoy the show. So the Cattleya Ducket Ruby is still in flower and still looking beautiful. I'm amazed at how long these blooms actually last. And then the Sherry Baby. It's absolutely filling the greenhouse with an amazing scent right now. It smells absolutely amazing. So after smelling this orchid for a few weeks, as I previously said, I get where people come with the scent of chocolate, but for me it's more vanilla, spicy, a little bit, but very sweet. And then the Oncidium Wildcat Bobcat, something to look forward to in one of our future bloom videos. And the Dendrobium Berioda has kind of become a beast at this point, she's just looking completely, she's blooming like crazy off every single keiki and putting out more keikis in between the blooms, I mean you can see there's more blooms forming at the back there. Um, but she really is a beast and she's looking horrible so I'm gonna have to do something about this one, pull off all the keikis, see what I can do, but I have a feeling this one will keiki and flower itself to death if I don't take some action so I'm gonna have to do something about that. So a few weeks on from our Zygopedalum update and look how big this growth is getting. Still with absolutely no markings. So very, very happy about this. It's looking good, this Zygopedalum. Now for some other interesting developments. This Cattleya type is actually in flower. It's got a few buds on and will be in flower soon. I forgot the name of this one, but I'll put the description below. Then I've got some South African bulbs growing in the back here, um, as well as a Ceturium orchid, if you can see back there, which is starting, South African orchid. And two more bulbs sprouting in the back here as well. Let me know if you want to see a video when these things start to flower. My Kingianum and my Parishi are starting to do very well. Look how big my Parishi is starting to get. I say big because, I mean, I've had this thing as a seedling for years. I'm finally starting to get something happening with this one. I'm pretty happy about that with the Parishi. Then the Microcoelia exilis, South African species, leafless orchid. Let's see if I can zoom in there. It's started to put out amazing root tips and they're looking very happy. I thought I would have had to change the mount on this. I don't water this very often, so I thought I'd have to change the type of mount, but it seems like the root tips are growing. We'll have to see what happens in the summer and if I have to change this one or not, the setup. Then another exciting development, this Cattleya coronet. Look at that sheath that's swelling. We have some amazing flowers. I really want to show you guys the flowers on this one. I'm not sure if I included it in last year's Blooms video, but they are absolutely beautiful. Um, this is the orchid that I would run into the fire in the house and grab <laughs> if the house had to burn. This is the orchid I would take with me. Then some not so fun news. This is my Cilogeny Roshashenii. As you can see, it's got these little black fungal or bacterial spots on the orchid. You can see the same things happening on the pseudobulbs. I'm not sure why this is happening. I suspect it's because my greenhouse doesn't get a lot of sun in the winter. I have seen the odd spotting last year as well around winter time on some of the leaves of this one as well as one or two others. I do have a fan which provides ventilation but I just don't think it's sufficient to counteract this. So yeah I have to watch this. I have seen this one pull through with the spots on before um, and then not progress any further. We are moving soon into spring so I'm going to give it a go and not cut that one off. Otherwise she's looking pretty good. You can see the amazing root system. Look at that inside the pot as well. Hi Teo. <laughs> Teo. 
Then a little bit of an aside note, this here is actually my coffee plant. You can see it's drooping at this point in time. I actually use this as an indicator plant in the greenhouse. When this one starts to droop, I know that I need to start checking the orchids to see if they need water. It's very give or take here um, in my climate. I mean, if we have really hot winter days, I can sometimes have to water every second day or so. In summer, definitely so. So I kind of need something like that just to let me know when I need to be checking the orchids, otherwise you can sometimes forget that maybe they need to be watered a little bit more frequently in winter if it gets hot. So, as you can see, today is watering day. Then for some other fun things, look at these. My Blitzilla striata. They're starting to come back. Can't wait to see what I'm going to get this year. I messed it up last year because I didn't follow their dormancy and watering routine properly. Although I did get them, I think, that year. So I think they were still adapting. But yeah, let's see if we can get it right this time. And this is the amazing beauty which I was waiting for, for the previous Blooms video, which didn't open. So you'll be seeing this one shortly in the next Bloom video. It's a Paphiopedilum, obviously. I'm not going to tell you which one, though. <laughs> you'll have to wait for the Bloom video. Let me show you guys what's happening on the Bandacious table. So this is my Holker Stylus MS Sunset. Yeah, we have the beautiful one I can never pronounce. <laughs> I think it's, oh gosh. And now the roots have attached themselves to the tag. So I'm not going to get a name out of that today, but it's something like Vandalina Camolfum by Ascacenda Kultana Leopard. Let's see if I'm right. Then at the back here, we have the new Angraecum Sesquipedali, which I was so excited to receive. I'm actually going to check between the leaves to see if there's anything. No, it doesn't look like we have any flower spikes forming at the moment. I just want to show you, the media that this one in, is in is pretty much gone. I need to repot it. You can see the orchids are a bit dehydrated. I've done that on purpose. I'm worried about it in the greenhouse staying too wet for too long. I don't know what's in that media at this point in time. So I need to repot it, but I didn't want to shock it right now because I want to wait till spring. I'm sure that one will do fine. It's a big orchid. I just need to get it put into a new setup soon. Then over here we have the Vander Ducket Blue. This is a very, very pretty bloom. I haven't seen it in flower myself. I've seen pictures of it. Uh, this one I received as a seedling from a friend years ago. We're talking about three, four years ago. So she's getting there. She's getting there. Maybe in the next two, three years I'll receive flowers from her. Pretty excited about that one. Then Vander Cherry Blossom, which is looking so stylish. <laughs> you saw her last week in the Kirka lab. And here is my other Angraecum sesquipedale. As you can see, this is what I was referring to. There's no longer a viable crown in this orchid. She has put out a cakey as you can see over here. But you can understand why I wanted to purchase another one. Then we have the vanilla orchid. This one I've struggled with over the years. We've got some nice root growth on this one, but I've really, really struggled to keep this one thriving. It's been difficult to keep the growing tip alive each time, and I think I've killed a few of them. That's the one I've killed recently. There was one over there, there was a growing tip which died uh, somewhere further down the orchid over here. There's the other one that died. Yeah, it's just, I don't have the ideal climate for, for vanilla orchids. They like it hot and they don't like to go cold in winter. And in this greenhouse at night, I do have a heater in here, but it goes down to 12 at some cases, and that's not ideal for vanilla orchids. So yeah, she's been holding on and I'm still persevering. And there's the Bangkok sunset sitting in the corner. I find this one pretty much an enigma. I really love it, it's one of my favorite orchids. She's an extremely slow grower. My Satorcus arcuata and the Mr. Sidium Capence. Look at the Shinorcus, Shinorcus fragrance. And Lephalonopsis pulchra, still in flower. Beautiful. And look how this Lelia purpurata is doing. Look at those pseudobulbs in this new growth. I'm definitely going to have flowers coming out of this one this in spring. Really excited about that. My Cattleya Leopoldii Cerulea from Sunset Valley Orchids is doing very well. Look at that root growth. 
so happy about this one. So that one's acclimatized really, really well. Then just next to it, I'm not going to show you too much about this because I'm sure there will be a care collab coming up at some point. But this is my Francis Fox Myrmecatabola. And then the Prostechia fragrance. I'm not sure if I've told you guys the story before. Along with a few of my other orchids, this one got burnt to a crisp in the heat of summer two years back. And I almost lost it completely. Survived by one pseudobulb. As you can see, lots of burn markings. But she's pulled through. So never give up, guys. Never give up on those orchids. And we've got another new growth coming through at the bottom there. So very happy about this one. Not sure if I ever showed you guys this orchid. This is my Odontoglossum pulchillum. I received it, I think it was three, four months back um, at a like an orchid sale. It was happening. Didn't pay much for it, but yeah, it's in pretty good condition. Really want to see these flowers though, so hopefully it will bloom for me this year. Anyways, thanks for watching guys. It's watering time now. I need to get to watering all these orchids. Keep well, stay safe, and enjoy the rest of your day. Bye.